The topic today we want to talk to cover is called transportation, assignments and network models. And this is another set of problems that are applied. Uh, I mean, there are uh, no any theoretical type. Uh, we can uh, apply uh, uh, always. So uh, what we have uh, learned so far, we are trying to use them for some um, famous uh, topics like transportation, assignment uh, problems. So the type of problems that you can see, they can be uh, six, seven types, but uh, here we are not going to cover all of them, just a set of them. Take them. Just uh, the first three uh, problems and not uh, these tools. Uh, definitely we try to learn about transportation problem because uh, they have lots of application in today's life and I personally um, using transportation problem um, so uh, uh, I guess my other colleagues uh, don't cover assignment problems but I'm give you a tour of assignment problems and finally transshipment problems so all of these three problems um, that I will try to cover uh, uh, are the most important problems in this context, linear programming models. Um, and the rest of them uh, also are very interesting. Uh, maximal flow problems, shortest source problem, and minimal spanning theory problems. These are also very interesting issues. If we have time, we may touch them. Otherwise, they will not be in your, uh, you know, final exam. Okay, just a review of what we learned and what uh, was the pattern. So linear programming problems uh, modeled as network. Um, so this chapter is starting to add uh, some type of problems um, that are uh, in the category of network problems. So when you say network, it means that um, uh, uh, something uh, should be connected. Yeah. When you say network of friends, what do you uh, expect? You expect you have some friends that are connected with each other with a reason, you know. So some of them are no friends from high school, some of them are friends from university, some of them um, are friends from neighborhood, and many other reasons. Um, so you see people uh, for a reason uh, can be connected. So that's called a network. So we have the same thing here as well. So we have a set of network, we want to find something out of that, uh, and there are some nodes and arcs uh, that uh, used uh, 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 to uh, uh, demonstrate a network. So, uh, So you can see in the previous slide, there are some specialized uh, algorithms available for uh, um, um, for different type of problems for solving them. But uh, we are not interested to cover them because uh, you know there are many software uh, platforms that you can use to solve these type of problems. So this is not uh, this is out of our scope. Uh, the only thing that we want to learn uh, is to understand what the transportation problem means and what uh, what is the idea behind that? What is the objective function? Uh, what are the constraints? And that's all. Um, some application uh, as well, 
uh, we don't want to go and solve them because there are some softwares and you can easily use uh, them um, to solve these type of problems. So when it came to network uh, models, okay, first we should know that uh, some terminology, uh, some important terms in order to understand the concept uh, perfectly. So there are some points on the networks that we call them uh, nodes. Okay, like what? Let me draw some points. So imagine that example of network of friends. So each person can play the role of node. Okay, node means a point. Okay, point in network. So that's the idea behind uh, nodes. So everything is sorted or ended to a node. So when you are friends with another person, so you are a node, another person is uh, also a node. So this friendship starts uh, and ends, uh, you know, it's connecting in, uh, to different things. This is called a uh, nodes. Uh, and um, we also have some arcs. Uh, 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 that, uh, for example, that uh, can show the type of friendship. Uh, um, okay, it is a kinds of lines on the network that connect uh, nodes together. Um, uh, for example, John and Kelvin can be connected in this way. Uh, and Kelvin and uh, Cooper has a friendship as well. But as you can see, there is not any friendship between um, John and uh, Cooper. So there is not any connection between them. So we usually uh, use uh, lines between nodes uh, um, to show a connection between them. So in other words, there are two main uh, ingredients in uh, network models. Uh, to main things in network problems. Uh, uh, so the first one is node and the second one is arc. When you want to send, let's bring uh, in separation example, uh, when you want to send something from China to Canada, uh, uh, let me draw another. This is China. This is Canada. Uh, from China to Canada. So what are the nodes? Nodes number one is China and nodes number two is Canada. And what is the arc? The arc it could be something, a direct line. For example, how much products are exported from China to Canada? Or sometimes, you know, this arc goes between some um, intermediate no um, nodes. For example, they should go, uh, let's say, to uh, 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 Vancouver. And from Vancouver to uh, uh, Calgary. And from Calgary to Toronto, for example. So sometimes this note is not a direct line, as you can see in uh, this picture. So um, sometimes your you have to use uh, some intermediate nodes. So as you can see in this example, let's go further. The important point is that in each network model, we have two things, nodes and arcs. Okay, now let's start the first network model. That is also very interesting. Uh, we call it transportation problem. The first network model that we now review is 
transport problem deals with a distribution of goods from several points of supply, which we call them source to a number of nodes. So we should call them destinations. Okay. Uh, so because this is a network problem, we expect to see some nodes. Uh, and what are nodes? The first group of nodes are sources. So when you are transporting, when you are sending something, uh, you need some sources, you need some nodes. Then uh, refer to the source of uh, um, software. Could be, for example, China, for example, could be India, could be any country in S, uh, um, Asia. So there are, uh, for example, nodes, and then we, uh, we have some uh, markets or demand points or dis destinations. It could be Canada, it could be United States, it could be Brazil, it could be any country. So these are destinations. So we have so a set of nodes that, uh, um, that we call them uh, sources, uh, and there are also uh, some um, nodes, a set of nodes that are receiving uh, that uh, products, and we call them demand points, destinations. Um, so we also have some arcs. We should uh, call them, um, we can call them distribution of goods. Uh, it could be any product, any product uh, in supply chain. So uh, these arcs are referring to how many goods should go there and how much is the cost of that. For example, you can send something from China to India, to, uh, from China, uh, from um, India to Canada. Okay, so uh, the problem would be how much you should send, how um, many you should send and how much is the cost of that. Let's review other things. Usually, given the capacity of goods uh, at each sources, the requirements at each destination. So, uh, these are very important. And capacity of goods. Uh, and then each sources, uh, each source have uh, has a, a certain amount of capacity, you cannot exit from that. And each destination record, uh, records a, a certain amount of products so that you should uh, meet them. And uh, these are the constraints in the network problems. So let's, uh, let me to show you a, uh, an example. that can make it uh, more clear. Here, we want to learn how to uh, use mathematics, uh, linear programming in order to write uh, formulation for transportation problems. Let's say, let's uh, just start uh, with one example, executive furniture corporation transportation problem. So, um, so we have a problem. They want uh, to look for the best network. So the idea is to minimize transportation cost. This is the objective function. Minimizing transportation cost. So, uh, so executive for the cooperation, they want to make sure that they will meet demands and they have some, so they have some demand points and uh, they have a set of customers. They want to make sure that those customers are happy and they are going to receive all the products records. And also they want to make sure that they are not promising something out of their capacity. 
so in other words, they are not uh, exceeding supply. Um, um, okay. Uh, for example, you have uh, a factor in India that can make up uh, 100 units, and can you promise 110 uh, units from uh, that? No, because it is out of the capacity of the, uh, the factory. So first of all, we don't want uh, this happen. Okay, this is not something that should happen in the problem. And also about meeting the demands. Uh, if the demand in, uh, in Canada is uh, 70 units, okay, is it the fine that you supply the demand of um, 65 units? It is not interested. It is not out of our uh, interest. It is out of our interest. So we don't want uh, this uh, to happen. So this problem and meeting the demand is referring to this point. And so, so we know the, what is the objective function and we know the constraints uh, here. We should meet demand and we cannot exceed the uh, supply. Uh, this is a nice example uh, for executive furniture cooperation. They have some sources, okay? You can see uh, all sources in the left uh, side. Uh, source one, source two, and source three. And each one has its own um, capacity. For example, this one is, uh, has a capacity um, about 100 units. So they cannot produce more than this uh, um, uh, number. And uh, the second source has a capacity about 200. Uh, and the last one, 200 as well. So you can see destinations as well in right side. The first destination uh, has a demand about uh, 200. And the second uh, destination has a demand about 200. And the last one has a, a demand about 200. Okay. So, so how many destinations we have to it and how many sources we have to it, okay? Um, um, we have also some arcs here. What does this arc is referring to? It's um, um, the, arc, the production costs of, or uh, transportation cost. So it means that uh, if I want to uh, send one unit, okay, uh, one uh, furniture from source one to uh, destination number one, how much uh, um, you should pay? $5. If you want to send one unit, one unit from source one, to destination one. But if you want to send one unit from source one to uh, destination um, number two, you have to uh, uh, pay four dollars per unit. Okay, this is the cost of transportation. So uh, if you remember, the objective function is minimization of transportation cost. So we have all um, 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 costs uh, here. So after understanding the problem well, the uh, first step is uh, uh, defining decision variable. So it's very important. So, uh, uh, so what's a uh, uh, can be uh, or a decision variable. So in it, let me show you. So we should decide about decision variable. So here we are going to use a decision variable, which is a kind of two dimensional decision variable. X, I, J. We call it X of I and J. Uh, so this means uh, the number of units shipped 
uh, from source i um, to destination j. Destination j. Uh, like what uh, the number of items shipped from China to Canada, the number of items shipped from India to Canada. Okay, so uh, the uh, difference uh, I refers to different sources. I uh, refers to uh, source one, source two, and source three, and J refers to destination one, destination two, and destination three. For example, let me show you. Um, where is some data here? Okay. Uh, uh, how I can sh uh, show the number of units shift from source one to destination one? I can show it with uh, these are the the amounts of uh, products shipped from this source to this destination with x one from source one to destination one. And what about when this line, uh, this R? All units shift from source one to destination two. X destination of source one to destination two. Uh, what about uh, uh, this one? Uh, all uh, products shift from source two to destination two. I can show it uh, with uh, this. Uh, my, uh, all units shift from source two to destination two. Okay. In this way, I can um, uh, define decision variables for all of them. In a the simple way. <clears throat> so um, I know that uh, um, this is decision variable, and I know about the transportation cost. Uh, it's uh, one one shows or indicates the number of units shift from source one to destination one, and how much is the cost of uh, per unit five dollar. I know about the cost. So uh, the second step is writing the model and objective function. So I um, have decision variable. I can easily write the objective function. Let me write it here uh, before you see. Where is this? What was uh, our objective function? Minimizing transportation cost. So we should write mean of z. I just choose a name for objective function. That is z. So uh, the um, uh, total uh, products or uh, total of uh, furnitures. Uh, we have uh, sent to uh, from source one to destination one. What was that? X one one. Multiplier. The cost of uh, um, shipping one unit from uh, source one to destination one. Five units. Five dollars. Pillars. Total amount of products we ship from source one to destination um, um, two x one two multiply the cost of that for the left. This. So as the same for other arcs, can easily write them by just uh, multiplying the cost per unit to decision variable, related decision variable. And the last one, x three three. Multiply the cost of uh, sending a unit uh, from source uh, three to destination to $5. 
Okay, is it clear for you? If you have any question, please ask. So, uh, next step is writing uh, constraints. So, uh, what are all constraints? We have two type of constraints here. First one is a uh, get later. First one is um, we cannot exit from the supply or capacity in this uh, main column. And second type of constraint is related to um, uh, meeting uh, uh, demand. Uh, of destinations. So we cannot exit. Uh, let's uh, start from the first uh, type of constraints. Uh, uh, so we cannot exit from demand, as you can see here in this matter. So this is objective function. And these are the first type of uh, um, constraints uh, related to uh, uh, supply. And this is the second type of uh, constraints related to demands, meeting demands. And the last one is we um, have to add non-negativity constraint uh, as well. So let's start with the first type of constraint, supply. So uh, um, let me um, raise some um, uh, lines here. So all um, so we cannot exit from um, uh, the uh, capacity of source one uh, uh, that is one hundred units. Okay, so. Uh, um, 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 Total um, 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 all uh, items that uh, will be sent from uh, um, supplier number one or source number one to all of them uh, cannot be more than 100 units. So it is okay that we put them equal um, as well. So how I can write all items uh, sent from this source, for example, to destination number one to destination number two, and to destination number two. If you get a summation of them, these three uh, arcs, let's write them, x11, plus x total um, items, and ship from source one to destination two plus um, all items ship from uh, source one to destination three. So this cannot be more than uh, uh, 100 units. The capacity of source one, this number. We can also consider a call sign here, but we prefer to use this one, uh, less than or equal to. You can write as well for different sources. For example, for uh, take, uh, raise this one and use a uh, highlighter. Uh, for example, for third source, you can use you um, have you have to uh, get a summation of decision variable related to these three arcs. All items uh, shift from source three to destination one x three one plus all items shift from source three to destination two x three two plus. All items shift from source three to destination three x three three. They must be less than or equal to three hundred. The capacity of source uh, two. So this is the way that you can write the um, uh, uh, the uh, constraint related to supply. 
you must be uh, uh, careful in uh, using the sign. For supply, we always use uh, less than or equal to. Uh, but for demand, we always use equal sign, as you can see here. How we can write the um, um, uh, demand uh, constraint that we first lines again. All products sent to each uh, the, uh, destination must be exactly the same as uh, equal to uh, um, uh, demands of that destination. For example, all items shift from um, Let me use highlight. All items shift from source number one to destination number one. All uh, X one one. Uh, okay, and all items shift from source two, a destination number one, and all items shift from this source, the last source, to first destination, should be equal to two hundred units. This is the demand of destination number one. Let me write the equation. All items shift from source one to destination number one. Plus all items shift from source two to destination number one. Plus all items shift from source three to destination number one must be exactly the same, equal to Two hundreds. Okay, uh, so uh, you can write as well for um, uh, uh, different destinations. So, any question? Is it clear for you? So we are done. We have worked in the objective function. We have uh, 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 we have written uh, the supply uh, constraints. We have written the demand constraints. So uh, we have done uh, with everything. And the problem is ready to solve. Okay. So as you can see, uh, uh, um, the. Uh, um, Uh, we have modeled the problem in the language of mathematics. So it's ready to be solved using a software. If you use a software, you will see the results will be like this. So 100 units will be sent from uh, uh, monies to uh, this city. And uh, uh, so if I, Came back to this one. Uh, X11 one one is equal to 100. So this is optimal value of X11. One one. After solving, we will reach to these numbers. Any question? Uh, this is the uh, minimum um, cost uh, you have to pay for shipping these items to the destinations. Uh, to meet uh, demands, why uh, you uh, uh, didn't exceed from the capacity of uh, your sources in different uh, cities. Okay, so this slide uh, provides you with uh, Excel uh, um, um, equations that you um, may use for solving but this uh, this is an uh, extra information you don't need to uh, know about them but if you are interested you are more than welcome to use this uh, if you have any question you can always send me an email and ask me about how you can use it okay Uh, again, you can use any software to solve it. This is not the scope of or the scope of or problem, but you are free to use, for example, MATLAB or any other software. So,
so again, um, uh, you can use this type of problems uh, in real life uh, application. Uh, this type of problem is very interesting. Uh, that uh, can give you a general picture of all problems that are related to transportation. In other words, I uh, give you another problem. You can easily solve it because you know the mathematics behind that. Okay, let's review uh, uh, how we can write the transportation problem in the language of mathematics. So what do you see here? Let's go one by one. The objective function. Um, yeah, we want to minimize total cost. Um, uh, so, uh, and total cost consists of the cost of transportation. You can see here, indicated by uh, C. Multiply the amount of transportation Okay, X, I, J. So what do we call C, I, J? Um, you can see here, the cost of, uh, uh, the cost, one unit sent from source I to destination J. You can see definition of this parameter. These three are or parameters. We know about the value of this three. But this is decision variable, and we have no idea about uh, the value of it before uh, um, solving the model. So, uh, SAJ shows uh, um, um, uh, the supply or the capacity of each source, and DJ uh, indicates demand of each uh, uh, destination. We have uh, two segments, uh, two constraints, because we have uh, two in um, here. Uh, we have uh, two indices, so we have uh, get a summation uh, on J and I, both of them. So we have also two type of constraints. Um, um, the first one is related to uh, supply. Uh, we cannot exit from the uh, capacity, and the second um, uh, uh, one is related to demand, meeting the demand. So in uh, the supply constraint, we want to make sure that summation of all supply um, uh, 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 is less than um, the capacity of uh, the supply of each source. So in other words, if I want to uh, 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 if I uh, want to write it down, you can easily find that for each source I related to uh, or uh, um, uh, sources. For each source, for example, source number one, let me write it uh, uh, down. Um, X uh, uh, for source number one. I'm talking about this one. X1 and uh, uh, 1 plus X1, uh, 2 for all J, J from number 1 to 2, two destinations plus X1, 3, if you get the summation on the destination, it's J must be less than or equal to SI, SF1. The capacity of uh, source one. You can either write for uh, source two and uh, source uh, um, um, uh, three. And for all of them, instead of one, you are using two here. Instead of uh, one, you are just using two and two, okay? Uh, so it's easy to use it. So any question regarding uh, this mathematics?
Uh, no question. Is it clear for you? Okay, right. So here we want to review one application of transportation problem, because you know, in terms of uh, uh, name, we may uh, do mistake that transportation is only referring to move moving uh, something, but it can be used for many purposes. Okay, one of the purposes of transportation problem is uh, facility location analysis. And this is also very interesting application of transportation. And this is referring to how to use transportation problems for locating some warehouses, locating some factories, locating some retail store. Uh, for example, if Walmart wants uh, um, to know, uh, should they establish a new retail store in Sydney or not, they may use this model. Uh, they will uh, know uh, that how much is the demand, how much is the supply, and, uh, 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 and they want to uh, look for, they need, uh, uh, a new uh, market, a new branch, or not. Transportation um, method especially is useful for this case because uh, this can help um, uh, us to know about the balance between demand and supply. So when you want to establish a new warehouses, a new branch, so it's definitely a major financial, it needs a major financial source. So you have to spend a lot of money for that. So you don't want to do a mistake. If a city, for example, like Sydney, does not need a third Walmart, should you establish uh, uh, that, you are wasting your money. And in other point, you have to consider several alternatives location um, and then select one of that that brings you the minimum cost, the objective function in transportation problems. So for all the, that location problems, I start with a set of alternatives. So, uh, it is a, a, this a problem is exactly similar to the goal of transportation problems. So in other words, facility location analysis is a, a subsection of transportation problems. And we can say facility location problem is a kind of transportation problem. Uh, so uh, what is the, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we, uh, um, uh, what do we hear? Uh, let's uh, say um, right now in Sydney, I have two Walmart, okay? I want to make another Walmart branch as well. But I'm not sure that if I have uh, to make it in south of Sydney or uh, north of uh, Sydney. So um, um, let me uh, um, draw it here. So for example, I have two uh, Walmarts here, this one and this one in Sydney, number uh, A and B. We have these two. What I'm looking for a new market in uh, north of um, Sydney or in uh, uh, south of this city. These two are all um, uh, alternatives. We are looking for which one uh, gives us the minimum cost. These are one and two is our alternatives. So, uh, uh, what we can do? The free, I'm not sure which one of these two places I have to establish a new Walmart branch, but I already know that I have um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, these two Walmart A and B, and uh, 
So what is the idea? The idea here is uh, let's one time solve the problem with a new location in north of um, uh, 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 north of uh, uh, Sydney. One time, I just imagine that we can establish in this location, and uh, we solve the problem with this location. And uh, the second time, we solve uh, this problem and imagine that the uh, um, 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 uh, 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 we establish uh, a new branch in this location in uh, south of uh, Sydney, uh, not this one. And uh, we solve the problem and find uh, what is the objective function. And after that, we compare these two models, these two objective functions, and find that which one gives us the minimum cost. And we choose, we uh, uh, select that one. Okay. So uh, I can make it uh, much more easier with one example. So let's review uh, 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 this one. There is a company, um, Hargrave Machine Company, and this company produces um, computer uh, in two different city. Uh, you can see um, the sources. We have two resources, and we have uh, also uh, four warehouses in Detroit, Dallas, New York, and Los Angeles. Uh, how many destinations we have? We have four destinations. Uh, we have two resources. What is the question? Two new uh, planned uh, sites being considered. <clears throat> so they are thinking to uh, establishing two, uh, establishing a new warehouse uh, in two locations. Uh, so uh, out of two possible city, one of them is in Seattle, and uh, the other one is Birmingham. Okay. We have two alternatives here. Number one in Seattle and number two in Birmingham. So uh, it is very similar to the previous uh, um, um, example. So here we are thinking either to make a new branch of Walmart in north of Sydney or in south of Sydney. Okay, so the, that's the idea is here. Here we are thinking, uh, should we establish in Seattle or in Birmingham? Do we have any warehouse or facility um, there? No. We don't have any facility in Seattle. We don't have any facility in Birmingham. We are just deciding, should we establish something there or not? Okay, so what is the question? Uh, uh, so we should uh, um, um, uh, consider both city as alternatives um, uh, and find which one gives us the minimum cost. So uh, uh, so it's uh, so easy. One time I um, have to solve the problem with Seattle. Uh, um, and we just imagine that what if uh, we uh, establish um, uh, a new plant in Seattle and uh, find that how much is the total cost? So let's call it uh, Z1. And uh, um, next time, I just imagine that uh, the new plant have been established in Birmingham and find out what is, uh, how much is the cost, total cost. Just imagine that it is uh, Z2. And after that, we just uh, compare these two, Z, and find which one gives me the lowest, which one is lower than uh, the other one, okay? 
So here we have all possible data in order to uh, model the problem. So uh, in Detroit, um, uh, Detroit is source for or destination. It is the destination, as you can see here. We have four destinations, Detroit, Dallas, New York, and Los Angeles. So uh, each, um, um, uh, each uh, uh, um, 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 uh, um, destination has its own demand. For example, Detroit has a demand about uh, 10,000 units. Dallas has a, a demand about 12,000 units. And if you get a summation of them, you can reach these numbers. Total demand, uh, um, total demand for uh, products is uh, about uh, 46,000. And uh, in this uh, column, you can see the uh, supply capacity of uh, all uh, sources. We have two different sources here. And see these two resources. And uh, it, um, each one has its own capacity. And if you get a summation of them, you can reach this number. As you can see, uh, we have a, a, a demands at destinations about 46,000, but our sources cannot supply all of them. And uh, uh, so the supply is less than uh, this amount. So uh, new plants, how much new plants uh, must uh, uh, produce? Uh, or generated. Uh, so I can easily uh, can um, calculate and find that how much new branch must produce with getting a deduction of uh, this number from uh, 46,000. Uh, Let me write it here. If I get a deduction, 46,000 minus uh, 35,000. You will reach these numbers. 11,000. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, capacity of new uh, branch. So I can um, uh, easily find how much is the capacity or uh, supply of new branch, either in Seattle or Birmingham? I don't have any idea right now in which city we should establish a new branch, but I'm looking for uh, which one gives me the lowest cost. So I know that the capacity of new um, uh, branch must be equal to 11,000. Why? because uh, we should meet all demands. We cannot produce less than uh, all demands. So if a new branch produce says uh, 11,000, we can meet all uh, demands and satisfy, uh, satisfy all customers. So we also have um, um, the cost of production cost per unit in different cities in Seattle, the production cost per unit is about $53 uh, per unit. And uh, in um, Birmingham, the production cost is about $49. So what is the question? Well, what we can do right now? Uh, 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 so uh, uh, as you can see here, one time I just imagine that uh, the uh, I, I can make these monsters like these. Uh, and just, um, so I will try to solve it one time. Uh, and, okay, with this network and other time, with this network, with the main hub. I just, first time, I just imagine that. If I establish a new branch in Seattle, and what if the next time I just imagine that I can um, establish the new uh, uh, the new branch in Birmingham, 
and we just remove this one. Okay. So in this way, you can uh, easily write two transportation problem and uh, easily solve it. So what is the or decision variables? Uh, and we know how to model it. Um, so decision variable can be defined uh, similar to the previous problem. The number of units shift from each source to destination. So uh, the first time, as you can see, I just imagine that uh, the, uh, the Seattle is the uh, fourth source of all uh, sources. But the next time, I just imagine that the uh, fourth source is in Birmingham. And uh, these are all uh, um, this uh, destination or demand points. So we know that how to model it. And uh, this, this will be the objective function, exactly similar to the, uh, what we had before. So when we have uh, four sources and four destinations, how many arcs we have? 16 um, arcs. And uh, how many variables we need to solve to have uh, uh, 60? Exactly similar to the number of arcs. Um, because uh, the number of arcs are the same as the number of variables. And how many constraints we should uh, have? Eight. When we have four destinations and four sources. For each sources, we have a constraint. Uh, not exceeding the capacity, and for each demand points, we have a constraint related to, related uh, to uh, meeting the demand. So you can see uh, two different uh, uh, constraints, two type of constraint. First uh, ones, uh, the first one is related to demand and meeting demand, and the second one is related to supply. With a, um, an assumption that we uh, establish a new branch in Seattle. We can see the capacity of Seattle that we considered is uh, as 11,000 here. Uh, and next time, so we saw so we will solve one time for Seattle and one time for Birmingham. And after we compare the cost, so this is the cost for Seattle. Uh, how much is that? Is that uh, 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 3,704,000? And, and this is the cost of if you establish in Birmingham. So which one is lowest? Seattle, this one is lowest. So if um, I uh, establish a new warehouse in Seattle, so this uh, uh, one can um, minimize or cost. So I just decide to establish a new branch in Seattle. So uh, this is Excel uh, to solve the problem and that's all for now. I think we um, covers uh, uh, two problems uh, and just uh, remain one of them um, assignments of, of the and transcript the two problems and we will uh, have some uh, example um, uh, so if you have any question you can ask if not, we can uh, consider a few minutes uh, break, and after that, we can come back again. Do you have any question? Good professor. Um, good morning. Go on. No, okay. I said no, I don't. Ah, thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Sorry. Uh, great. 
Thank you so much. And uh, we can come back after uh, three minutes. Thanks.
Okay, do you have any question? No? You're right. So, next to problems, uh, assignments and transshipment are uh, exactly the same as the previous one. Transportation problem. Some minor change. Uh, let me show. So, the second category of, of problem that we want to address in this uh, uh, lecture uh, are called assignments uh, problems. So, these are a class of problems that determines the most efficient assignments of people or equipment to particular tasks. Okay, so if you want to uh, 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 if I, if I want to give you a very simple example, I would go back to uh, daycare, or, okay, uh, or even a poor school. So uh, if you remember, uh, uh, there are kinds of problems that they are given to kids. For example, we have shapes like that, like these. We have a circle, we have uh, anything, and then uh, in the other side, we have a board. Uh, that may have different shapes, for example, um, uh, the post. Uh, different posts on that board. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, uh, you're uh, asked uh, to uh, 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 relate items. And so, it is clear that you will look at uh, um, something like that and um, uh, Point that it must be uh, located in these parts. Uh, and this figure related to this one. And this one is related uh, to this one. Uh, and this one is finally related to this one. So I just want to show you what are talking about what we are uh, trying to assign each of these items to its related item items uh, on the other side. So this is what we are trying to do, and these are called assignment problems. So in assignment problems, we have only one item that should be assigned to another category. Okay, we have one to one relationship here. It is not like a transportation problem that we have to match uh, 1,000 uh, supply with uh, 1,000 demands, for example. Uh, this is not like that. And, you know, there is only one match for each shape. You cannot uh, say that it's, uh, I have 1,000 and let's say um, items. And I cannot say, uh, uh, for example, uh, two uh, uh, hundreds uh, goes in this way, uh, for example, uh, 200 goes to in this shape and 800 uh, goes in this shape. No, this is not possible. So what is the objective function? The objective function in this uh, problem is uh, like the previous one, minimize total cost or total uh, task time. We have two type of objective function in this kinds of problems. So uh, it may be uh, um, uh, minimization of total cost or minimization of total task. So uh, this is start with uh, one example. Uh, okay, this is uh, a repair shop. Uh, um, so has just received two new repair projects that must be repaired quickly. So 
uh, two customers has bought a radio, a toaster oven, and a coffee table. Okay, so they have bought these two uh, items, and they want uh, um, um, uh, this repair shop to repair it uh, them uh, as soon as possible. And uh, that's the problem. And uh, this shop has three workers with different talents. So uh, 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 these guys have two different level of talents and some of them are senior and expert and some of them are just join uh, the repair shop. So they don't have much experience and it takes time uh, for them to repair uh, one um, item. So uh, what is the objective function? The object function is uh, minimize total cost. So uh, the owner, the, the owner of a repair shop, pay different uh, of uh, wages for different workers based on their uh, skills and based on um, their uh, time uh, um, uh, for repairing something. So the object function is minimize total cost. What is the cost? The wages in the uh, uh, repair shop pay to uh, workers. So, it's very important that we consider the issue. Well, what is the problem? We have two items or two equipment, a radio toaster oven and a coffee table. These are broken, okay? We need to repair them, and this shop has two people, two workers, and that uh, they are in different experience level. And we want to minimize total cost of assigning people to their job, to uh, this job, to this, uh, to this three project. So if I use a very expert person to do that, uh, for, for example, to go for coffee table, uh, do you think it is a good idea? And I sent uh, just uh, um, uh, send uh, another person to do to repair a toaster oven. So uh, we can model it and find what is the uh, optimal decision. This is a graphical presentation of uh, what we are talking about. So we have three different people. And uh, you can see the name of them, um, uh, Adams, Bone, and Cooper. Source one, source two, and source two. This is exactly the same as transportation problem. But here we have, you know, uh, instead of 100 uh, items capacity, we are just consider one as a uh, capacity. So. We have just one person that can be assigned to one project. If Adams assigned to project one or to project one, you cannot uh, assign Adams to an another project. If project two uh, assigned to uh, Brown, uh, you cannot uh, give this project uh, to another person, for example, Cooper or Adams. So you can see the name of project here. Um, and can consider them as destination with, with a demand of one. So this is a, a transportation problem. This is like transportation problem, but uh, you have one uh, in, instead of each capacity, you just consider one and instead of demand, you just consider one. So that makes it the problem so easy to model it. So the first thing after understanding the problem is defining the decision variable. We can define decision variable, but in different ways. So here uh, we have um, uh, 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 to define an appropriate decision variable. So this decision variable that I'm going to use is xij. So what is the best definition for that? So as you can see here, XIJ is going to refer to if a one person assigned to a project, if a person I assigned to project J, 
So we are going to use different type of variables here. Normally, in previous examples, uh, the, the variables that we were using, we were using xij, for example, uh, they are greater than or equal to zero. We consider them as non-negative uh, decision variable. But here we are using a kinds of uh, variables that we call them binary. I, uh, I'm going to write it down uh, for those uh, interested. Binary variable. These kinds of uh, decision variables can just take one or zero. If this person, for example, person uh, one, Adams, assigned to project one, uh, uh, X, uh, IJ can take uh, one. Otherwise, uh, uh, if this person assigned to another project, it can take zero. When we consider uh, the same variable as non-negative, it can take any number bigger than uh, zero. It can take uh, zero, one, two, uh, uh, three point five, any number. But here, decision variable can just take uh, two uh, numbers. It can take zero or one. Okay. So, uh, uh, what is the uh, what are all sources? I can be. Adams, Brown, or Cooper, and uh, we have three also the, the uh, project, project one, two, and two. How we can formulate uh, this problem? You can easily write this one is uh, x one one, and what is the cost of assigning Adams uh, to project one? This is the wage. Uh, you have to pay to this person, to Adams, to repay project one. And this is the cost you have to pay uh, to Adams if uh, he uh, 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 repays uh, project uh, two, uh, for example, one item. So uh, you can just easily multiply a decision variable related to each R to, the, uh, to, this, co um, to this cost. As you can see here, you can easily write the objective function. Uh, so this is the, the second step after we uh, uh, made a decision variable. So um, um, in the objective function, we want to minimize total cost. So <clears throat> and, and, uh, so what are all, all possible sources also? Of cost, uh, they are uh, the wages we pay to persons. And uh, third uh, uh, step is uh, writing the constraints. So we have to find a way to model the constraints. As you can see, we can consider two different two type of uh, constraints as well. One of them for persons uh, or supply, and second type for demand. But here. We just consider one instead of any number for capacity or demand. We are just considering one, and all uh, signs you see here are um, equal sign. We are just using equal both for uh, supply and demand. Okay, and after all, I have to write this one, and x i j can just take zero or one. And what this constraint says, uh, uh, for example, that person uh, one, uh, Adams can be assigned to project one or two or project three, one of them. This decision variable can just take zero or one. And if x one one takes one, that means Adams assigned to the uh, first project. And these two uh, decision variables just uh, take uh, takes zero. 
and cannot take uh, uh, one. And uh, for example, if uh, um, uh, 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 this project project one assigned to uh, Adams, as you can see here, this zero variable takes one. So uh, Adams assigned to the first project. So the project one cannot be assigned to different person, to second person and third person. These are related to project and these are related to persons we have. OK, any question? Nothing? Is it clear? So if you solve the problem, you finally see these results. So uh, Adams uh, is going to do the project three because x13 is equal to one and uh, Brown is going to do project two in other words, assign to project two and that's why it is called assignment problem. So x22 is one and x31 uh, that will be, uh, uh, that means uh, Cooper uh, doing project uh, number one and this is the minimum cost for assigning a three project to three different uh, person. OK. And this is the Excel file that you can use in order to solve the problem. And definitely, um, uh, you need some uh, formation. You can use any other solvers. And the last type of problems that we are uh, covering is transshipment problem. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, here is, a, uh, uh, for example, here is a, um, a, a Toronto, and uh, I want to send something to Halifax. And this is top. Uh, okay, I want to, uh, so instead of uh, sending directly from Toronto to Halifax, um, you're going to send them, for example, to Moncton. Yeah. And after, this is uh, the boy, you have uh, a huge warehouse in Moncton. After that, from uh, Moncton, you may send them to Sydney. You may send them to Sydney. And after that, you send the items to Halifax. So instead of sending directly from Toronto to Halifax, you may use intermediate nodes. Yeah. So that's the idea if you could send directly from Toronto to Sydney. So it's uh, like a transportation problem. But uh, if you are using local warehouses or regional warehouses, such as um, mountain or, uh, uh, or you are using distributed places in different city, this is called transshipment problem. You are using another warehouse, another nodes between um, two nodes. Uh, so items are being moved from uh, a source to a destination through a uh, through an intermediate point okay so intermediate point here is mount, uh, mountain and sydney uh, mountain plays uh, the role of a kinds of re regional warehouses that everything is going there and from there it's going to be distributed there is another name for intermediate point as well so let's uh, review uh, it uh, uh, by uh, example. So for us, uh, the mesh, uh, uh, for us, the machine manufacturers, uh, snowblowers in Toronto and Detroit. So we have two different sources, one of them in Toronto and second one in Detroit. Ship to regional distributed centers. So we have two uh, uh, intermediate points. 
uh, one of them in Chicago, and the next one is Buffalo. And the uh, uh, stoppers ship to uh, demand points or supply houses in New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis. We have also three destinations. Uh, number five, the uh, uh, the first destination, New York, and uh, second one in Philadelphia, and the last one, San Luis. So, so shipping costs vary by location and destination. Okay, so there is uh, not a fixed cost. It really depends on where you are going to send these items and through which intermediate uh, locations. Okay, so snow blowers cannot be uh, shipped directly from, for example, factories in Toronto to uh, destination points in, uh, in, in New York. It should go to either Chicago or Buffalo. And after that, uh, uh, sent to destination points. And this is the idea, okay? The problem looks very similar to transportation problem. The only difference is that we have some intermediate location, okay? How to model it? This is the uh, shape of the problem. As you can see, I just named uh, exactly the same as this picture. Uh, um, so we have two sources. Each one have uh, its own uh, capacity. Uh, so uh, in Toronto, Toronto uh, the factory in Toronto can uh, uh, produce 800 snowblowers each year, for example. And you can see destinations and demand for destinations in the uh, right side. And uh, these are demand of destinations. So in New York, there is uh, a demand about uh, 450 snowbirds per year, for example. And we have uh, two uh, intermediate points. So in Chicago and Buffalo. Uh, so after understanding the problem, uh, we should, the first step, define the uh, decision variable. Uh, this is the cost, and uh, uh, let me, before defining the decision variable, uh, uh, let me explain about the cost. If you send something from, uh, for example, Toronto to Chicago, this, uh, if you send uh, something from Toronto to Chicago, it costs us about uh, $4 per unit. But if you send uh, from Toronto to Buffalo, it takes uh, $7. Okay. It, uh, if you send from Toronto to Buffalo, it takes $7. But here from Toronto to uh, Chicago, it takes $4. You can write the uh, um, this cost above arcs if uh, it uh, can uh, make it uh, easier for you. And for each arc, we need to define a decision variable. We can use a, uh, a, a, a same decision variable that uh, we use in transportation problems. Xij that shows the number of units shipped from location i to location j. Instead of the source and demand, we are just using location, node i. Node i can be 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, this uh, these ones can be all sources. We can just send item from this to this one, to this one, or for example to this one. Too. So, but uh, uh, these ones cannot be all sources. So this is why we are using um, I uh, one uh, equal to one, two, three, or four and not five, six, or seven. And you can see the uh, 
uh, J uh, with, uh, that indicates uh, 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 intermediate points, three and four, uh, and destination points, uh, five, six, and seven. And I just can uh, can uh, indicate uh, sources, uh, supply uh, points, and uh, intermediate points. You can see intermediate points in both I and J. So this is the way that you can define decision variable. Let me erase some uh, here. have some um, constraints uh, that we should meet here. So uh, the objective function is uh, minimizing uh, total cost subject to this R or object uh, or constraint. Uh, so we have uh, um, uh, two supplier. We cannot exceed from uh, the capacity of them. These are related to uh, um, uh, uh, supplier constraint. The number of units shipped from Toronto cannot be more than the capacity of uh, production in uh, Toronto. And we have also three demand points. Each one has its own demands. So these are related to demands. And we have also two uh, uh, or one type um, for one another type of uh, constraint here. The number of units shipped from out of Chicago is equal to the number of units shipped into Chicago. And uh, exactly the same for Buffalo. The number of units shipped out of Buffalo is equal to the number of units uh, ships, uh, shipped uh, into Buffalo. As you can see here, we can, uh, we can just imagine that if, for example, 100 items as Nobel Awards, Ship to uh, Chicago. Do you have any question? Amio? No? Okay. Please make sure that you are muted if you are not talking. Uh, if we are sending uh, 100 units snowblowers to Chicago, so 100 items must leave this city. 100 units and we cannot imagine that uh, uh, they have a demand in Chicago and uh, so you know um, there is um, some deduction in this city so all items uh, move to this city Chicago must live okay so this uh, um, uh, write the object function and constraint uh, so easy. The object function is exactly the same as transportation problem. So you just need to multiply the cost of transportation between each two nodes to uh, the uh, I, the number of items move through each arc. So after that, we need to write uh, supplying uh, constraint. We cannot exceed the capacity of suppliers. We need to meet uh, demands. We need to satisfy uh, customers and uh, meet all demands. And after that, this is uh, very important. And all items, for example, wish to uh, Chicago must leave Chicago. Let me write it here. So all items wish to uh, Chicago. These are uh, all items may be wish from Toronto or Detroit. So X uh, one one from node one to node three, Chicago, tell us uh, from uh, node two, uh, Detroit, this one to Chicago, uh, node three must be equal to all items leaves, uh, all items leaves this city. From uh, ship from Chicago to New York, from Chicago to uh, Philadelphia is three six and x three um, seven. 
from Chicago to San Luis. Must be equal to x to five from Chicago to New York. X to five. X uh, to six from Chicago to Philadelphia. And from uh, Chicago to San Luis, X to E. So, so as same as the, this uh, formation, you can use for buffalo. All items wish to buffalo must uh, leave uh, this city, must be shipped from uh, destinations. So in this uh, way, you can write uh, uh, fellow balance constraints. And after that, you need to add non-negativity constraint. Any question? Nothing. That's great. So this is all for uh, today. So uh, after solving, you can reach these numbers. For example, one uh, six hundred fifty units from Toronto uh, ship from Toronto to Chicago, and uh, one hundred fifty units ship from Toronto to Buffalo. And this is the minimum cost. So there are also uh, you can use Excel for it. Um, so there are another type of problems, but we are not interested to cover them. Um, they are out of our scope. Um, a maximum follow problem that are, uh, they are trying to, uh, uh, to maximize the follow through uh, the arcs. And there are another type of problem like shortest road path. They are looking for um, uh, the shortest routes between, uh, the, for example, uh, nodes uh, one and six. For example, this one can be the shortest path between these two. That I can use my eye, uh, eyes uh, to solve this problem. <laughs> That's so easy. So uh, there is another type of problems that is called minimal spanning through problem. So this one is also out of our scope. So uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you so much for attending. If you have not any question, the class has been finished. Let me uh, stop recording.